This conference will now be recorded. So now we will go into our content. So that is a small uh, motivational video, guys. So that is how we have started our session today. Right. Uh, let me start with our presentation. Right. So first, uh, before going into pre-structured concrete structures, first we would like to know what is the difference between RCC and the PSC structures. Okay. So pre-structured concrete structures, how they are different with an RCC structures? So that we will try to, you know, uh, learn here. You guys, I think you can uh, see my presentation now, and I hope uh, my audio is, uh, you know, audible to you. So what is the major difference between RCC and PSC? So here in the third year first semester, you already gone through uh, reinforced concrete structures, isn't it? So reinforced cement concrete. So here in the reinforced concrete, uh, so we all know that it is a composite material, so which is a combination of concrete and steel. So where concrete is a brittle material and steel is a ductile material. So combining together, we call it as a composite material. So where concrete can take care of, uh, you know, compression forces and the steel can take care of uh, tensile forces. So in which, like, you know, concrete relatively have low tensile strength. Okay. So as being concrete is a brittle material, so uh, it have low tensile strength and ductility are going to be encountered by introducing the reinforcements into the concrete, isn't it? So that is how we learned. Uh, uh, the reinforced to concrete, uh, you know, or structural elements. So here, uh, the reinforcement is usually, you know, uh, it's not necessarily that steel reinforcements are going to be induced or embedded into the concrete before the concrete sets. See why? Because uh, when there is no steel, what happens? Concrete alone will fail under, you know, uh, under tension. So why? Because below the neutral axis. So when the member is subjected to load, you can find the tensile zone below the neutral axis so above the neutral axis you can see the compression load isn't it so to control the cracks below the neutral axis you have to provide the reinforcement which is perpendicular to the crack okay so in that the that is the reason why you're going to provide the reinforcement uh, along the along the length of the member okay so uh, along its a longitudinal direction right so that is how uh, not only the steel nowadays in the modern reinforced to concrete structures the variety of reinforcing materials are coming into picture. Okay, so like steel. So apart from steel, there are polymers or alternative composite materials are coming into picture. So which in condition with the rebar or not? Okay, so that is how the reinforcement concrete is usually deals with. And not only that, uh, here the reinforcing schemes are generally designed so to resist the tensile stresses, isn't it? So why in which direction or in which location? So majorly it is a very particular regions of the concrete which might you know cause unacceptable cracking or structural failure so here you can see one example uh, so where uh, uh, putting in the column which was uh, reinforced with the reinforcing bars okay so why you are providing reinforcement only to the bottom of the footing why can't at the top why because bottom of the footing it's also acting like a beam right so footing is also a small kind of beam which is having less in depth right so to control the tensile stresses, so definitely you have to provide the reinforcement below the neutral axis, isn't it? So why to so what for the reason of unacceptable cracking or the structural failure to take it off? So that is how the reinforcement concrete structures are usually defined, and that's what we learned in the third year subjects. Okay. Yeah. So let me uh, give a comparison between RCC and pre-stressed concrete in a very small. Uh, 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 you know, um, uh, you know, pictorial uh, representation. So in the left hand side, you can see the uh, picture in the four different stages. Let's see the first one. So here a concrete beam will begin to bend and heavily loaded, isn't it? So let us consider a beam which is simply supported over the two supports. Okay, let a vehicle passing on the beam. So what happens? There is no reinforcement in the beam. So when the vehicle comes at center of center of the span, so definitely it starts bending due to the heavily loaded. 
in the second case what happens the base of the beam starts to crack why because as we know concrete is weak in tension below the neutral axis your beams will tend to tensile cracks the base of the beam starts to crack uh, where the concrete is pulled apart okay this is what happens in the second stage of the picture and coming to the third stage here what happens placing a steel rod so let's improvise the second stage so to control the cracks over here so the next improvisation is taking place like providing the steel rod which is perpendicular to the crack so here the crack is vertical and we are providing reinforcement or a rod which is uh, perpendicular to the crack so place a steel rod inside the beam holds the concrete together and stops the beam from cracking so while providing the reinforcement in the beam what happens even though vehicle is heavily loaded it, it won't uh, have any cracks why because the steel is uh, taking care of the tensile forces and which is avoiding the cracks isn't it in the fourth stage you can see stretching the rod and then releasing it to squeeze the concrete so which is makes the beam very strong see what is the difference between third picture and fourth picture here in the third picture we are just providing the reinforcement in the beam to control the cracks isn't it so if you if i want to increase the strength of the beam more than uh, more than controlling of the cracks more than it's beyond beyond the strength so what we have to do we have to uh, we what we have to do we have to squeeze the i mean uh, we, we have to stretch the rods okay and squeezing the concrete make the beam very strong so with the help of this pre stressing technology with the help of this pre stressing concrete so here what we are doing we are stressing the concrete by pulling the rods okay in terms of tension okay so when we start pulling the rods in terms of tension and then releasing what happens your concrete will get squeezed okay as we know concrete is very good in compression when it gets get squeezed squeezed so automatically the member will have will have more carrying capacity the member will become more more strong got it so that is the main reason the stages of without reinforcement with reinforcement and pre stress so that's uh, where you can able to uh, observe clearly over here so let's see the comparison between rcc and pre stress of concrete over here so which uh, which I, which uh, it was uh, uh, you know um, compared uh, with the help of six parameters the first one load bearing capacity so what happens in pre stressed concrete the load bearing capacity is high compared to the reinforcing concrete structures why because it's a comparatively low so here you are seeing your concrete is squeezed because of applying a tensile forces into the rod so where it will have very beam becomes very strong isn't it so next coming to the deflection here the pre stressed concrete is have very less deflection and reinforcement concrete will have more deflection coming to the third parameter which is economy so here pre stressed concrete is economic than rcc and the reinforcement concrete is expensive why because in reinforcement concrete your beam will have complete uh, heavy reinforcement which take care of the tensile stresses but in pre stressed concrete there is no uh, reinforcement at all there will be a reinforcement that reinforcement will be only a skin reinforcement to make that into a rectangular shape or to make into a uh, i section or uh, you know t sectional shape so to make that into a specified shape so you are going to provide a reinforcement which that reinforcement is called as a skin reinforcement okay so apart from that there won't be any reinforcement to take care of the tensile stresses in pre stressed concrete so that is the reason why pre stressed concrete is more economical than the reinforcement concrete in the next fourth parameter is shock resisting ability okay so pre stressed concrete will have more high i mean high shock resisting ability compared to reinforced concrete and the fifth parameter is for long spans obviously nowadays you are looking at very long spans at right, flyovers you know in elevated uh, structures even in the tall i mean uh, very long span bridges like uh, cable stretch suspension bridges see they are all uh, you know uh, the deck itself it is a uh, highly pre stressed okay so when the member is pre stressed we can able to carry the heavy load not only based on load it can even it can able to sustain for the long spans so for long spans we will go for pre stressed concrete where the pre stressed concrete is applicable for the long spans and reinforcement uh, concrete is not at all applicable for the long spans okay so the next one is self weight the last parameter is the self weight here the pre stressed concrete will have very i mean less much uh, i mean less rcc in the reinforced concrete greater than pre stressed concrete so what happens here you are reducing the reinforcement in the in the pre stressed concrete 
which itself will reduce the cell weight, isn't it? See, because the reinforcement density is more, it's around 7,850 kg per meter cube. When there is no reinforcement in crystals to concrete, obviously the cell weight of the particular beam or particular structural element will get reduced. Okay, so in that way, uh, obviously the RCC and PSC comparison, pre-stress to concrete is having a lot of advantages compared with the reinforcement concrete structural elements. Okay, now in the second picture, you can able to see clearly. So here the reinforced member and this is the pre-stress member. So this is our reinforced member where you can see the difference between when it is unloaded and when it is loaded. So this is the unloaded member when it is just a simply supported. Okay, this is reinforcement in the beam. So when it is loaded, what happens? It will undergo sagging. So you can see the sagging portion of the beam when it is loaded, isn't it? So let's see immediately what exactly the pre-stressed beam looks like. So the pre-stressed beam usually it won't be it won't be plain, it won't be horizontal. It will have a hogging nature before unloaded. Got it? So it will have a hogging nature. It, it won't look same like an uh, RCC member. It will be in a hogging nature. So when it is subjected to load, it will become striped. Instead of sagging, when the precision member is loaded, it will become striped. So that means you can't see the sagging or you can't see the deflection in pre-stressed pre member. Got it? So the, the advantage of pre-stressing is so here you can't see any kind of deflection or any kind of sagging in the beam. Why? Because the member initially when it is unloaded, it is hogging. When it is subjected to load, it will become straight instead of sagging. So that is the most advantage of the pre-stressed beam compared with the RCC structural elements. So here you can see the you can see the six different stages of a member. So unstressed member, when it is subjected to load, you can see the deflection curve of the member. So the third part it comes to the it comes to the pre-stressing. So here the tendon subtressed, and here releasing the pre-stressing forces where the concrete is getting squeezed, right? So here the pre-stressed deflection it goes to hogging, so which is nothing but an unloaded member. So the fifth stage is nothing but the unloading member, right? So when it is subjected to load, total deflection, so it will become striped. See here you can ask me the doubt, sir, how long it is going to be hogged before it is unloaded? See, this hogging is just a replica of the sagging of the reinforced member. Got it? So let us say here in RCC member, you may find or two or three mm of the deflection. So here in pre-stressing, what they do, they will make that two to three mm of deflection in terms of hogging. Okay. So that is how they make into hogging of two to three mm deflection. When it become when it is subject to load, it becomes straight. Understood? So this is what uh, the, the biggest advantage of the pre-stressing member. Okay. So here, these are the different methods of pre-stressing. So there is a pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. As uh, when we are talking about stressing over here, the stressing is going to be takes place in two different modes. One is a pre-tensioning. Pre-tensioning and post-tensioning, the major difference is in the pre-tensioning, you are going to apply a tensile forces in the strands before concreting. In post-tensioning, you are going to do after concreting. Okay, that is a major difference. In depth, in detail, we are going to study about this method of pre-stressing in coming topics. Okay. Yeah. So these pictures will give us a glance of what exactly the standard concrete and what exactly the pre-stressed concrete. In the left picture, you can able to see clearly, as we know, uh, in a beam uh, above the neutral axis where it is subjected to compression, below the neutral axis it is subjected to tension. So the, the at, at tension only the member will be have a cracked. Uh, zone okay cracks will generate below the neutral axis so why because concrete is poor in tensile strength got it so this is the clear idea why the standard concrete is developed and uh, modeled i mean um, uh, regenerated into the pre-stressed concrete with having a more advantages okay so next uh, what exactly the pre-stressed concrete so here psc is a structural concrete so which is going to have an internal stresses so which are going to be induced in the concrete to potential or to increase the concrete resulting from its load okay so that is what exactly the pre-stress and concrete is uh, coming to picture so here what happens you know uh, the member which is going to be produced by the tensioning of uh, rods okay so here it is not a rod in pre-stress and concrete we are going to call it as a tendon right 
in rcc what are the reinforcement we call it as a rebarring isn't it but in pre stress to concrete we are going to call calling it as a tendon right so here you are going to apply the uh, tensioning of the high strength tendons so which is located in the member okay so to uh, within the adjacent to the concrete volume and it is done to improve the performance of the concrete in service okay that is the reason why we are going to provide the tendons in the concrete and we are applying the tension force in the concrete to improve the performance of the concrete right so that is what exactly and here you can see how the tendons looks like see here earlier uh, you all seen how the exactly the rebarring rebar rod looks like circular rod which is having some threaded portion on it okay so which is have some spiral kind of threading on it isn't it so they are all uh, for gripping grip towards the concrete right so here the tendons are different so you can see uh, how the tendon is made up of tendons is made up of with some wires okay got it so it is, there are few technical uh, uh, terms uh, what is what do you mean tendon what do you mean wire what do you mean strand everything i going to discuss in brief in the coming classes so here uh, this is what the tendon so ten, tendon is made up of uh, individual wires which each wire is going to be called as a strand okay so seven wire strand so which we are going to uh, you know made it like this okay so tendons may consist of a single wire or multi wires or they are going to be threaded bars and are most commonly made for high tensile steel so they are not just made up of in, uh, i mean uh, mild steel rods so these tendon rods are going to be made up of hwsd bars or hwsd rods and matter or a carbon fiber or aramid fiber rods so here they are going to prepare these the tendons okay so that is what exactly the pre stressed concrete uh, you know in detail so let me uh, show the advantages of pre stressed concrete over rcc why because when you are studying uh, this psc you have to know what advantages that psc made uh, over the reinforced concrete structures isn't it so let's see what is the advantage of psc psc is more durable as we already discussed in brief the comparison between rcc and psc so here you can see <coughs> clearly psc is more durable since there are no tensile cracks at all why there is no tensile cracks at all why because before unloaded your member is hogging when it is loaded your member will become become straight there is no sagging takes place there is no deflection at all when there is no deflection there is no cracks at all okay in that way your psc is more durable and having no tensile cracks at all so whereas in rcc tensile cracks are unavoidable you can't avoid cracks in rcc why because when it is subjected to load it becomes sagging so obviously when when it is sag you can find the tensile cracks in it so hence there is a greater danger of adverse environmental effects in rcc and what is the next advantage so here as high strength concrete is used and also since dead load movements can be neutralized with the psc <coughs> why because so here in pre stressed concrete so what you are doing is you are stressing you are pulling the strands and inducing the compression stresses into the concrete so when you, when the concrete uh, is capable of carrying the compression forces your concrete you should, should have a high grade isn't it when the high grade concrete can able to carry its maximum compression forces so that is the reason why your concrete high strength concrete is going to be used in psc instead of a normal concrete okay what is high strength concrete when the concrete is beyond uh, 30 newton per mm square so that concretes are going to be a high strength concrete so that grade of concretes are going to be used in psc rather than rcc structures okay understood so that is the main advantage is psc compared to rcc what else the material cost in psc is much less than the equivalent rcc member obviously so here the material cost will be always less why because there is no reinforcement in psc so compared to rcc that's why it is more advantage towards economical point of view and the next one deformation as we we'll see in the comparison between psc and rcc obviously there will be very less deformation and the next one the fatigue strength of psc is very good so what do you mean fatigue load fatigue load is nothing but repetitive load or cyclic loading okay when a member is subjected to cyclic loading so we call that as a fatigue loads okay so or repetitive loading right so for even for the repetitive loading your psc is very good compared with an rcc structure and coming to the fifth point so here precious concrete has high resilience what do you mean resilience what is the meaning of resilience sir the resilience is a other name of strain energy isn't it Oh, no? right 
the old resilience is nothing but other name of the strain energy what do you mean resilience resilience is nothing but the energy is stored in a body to regain its original shape and size okay so what happens in psc when a memory is subjected to load it will become strike when it is unloaded it can regain its original shape and size so that means it is storing some energy so by that psc will have high strain energy high resilience compared with an rcc structure okay so that is the reason why psc are more resilient uh, when it is subjected to loads and it can even able to uh, carry the occasional overloadings also okay without suffering any serious harm the psc can able to carry the occasional overloadings also compared with the normal rcc structures and in case of psc cracks particularly in such situation so which develop temporarily will close up completely okay so whatever the minor cracks you can see in the concrete it, there it can it can be healed by itself understood so in case of psc cracks you can't see such a situation why because they are very temporarily where it can be close up completely okay it can close on its own where it can have is the even the self healing capacity okay so these are the advantages of crystals in concrete or the rcc structure uh, so whenever we study any concept or any topic definitely there will be disadvantage isn't it so what are the disadvantages of plc over on rcc so there are very few disadvantages one is definitely it requires a skill labor and good quality control okay plc is not just like you know where any labor or any mason can work on no exactly it should require a lot of skills towards uh, work uh, working on uh, pre stressing technology or you know pre tensioning and post tensioning first they have to know the concept so that is the reason why pre stress and concrete is not even came to uh, the <coughs> uh, you know rural level okay it's still uh, these kind of techniques are using by the urban urban areas and for uh, high rise buildings and even for infrastructural projects okay and it need a special technique to apply pre stressing forces and anchorage the wires so here uh, doing pre stressing is not uh, a very small thing so there is a special team there are very uh, you know specialized team who can able to do the pre stressing uh, <clears throat> technology and using the pre stressing forces there are a lot of uh, different materials can be used for pre stressing like anchorage bearing cones wedges you know <clears throat> there are different types of materials available okay you have to get those materials where the pre stressing uh, can be done in the psc structural elements so that's why disadvantages are very few so there are very uh, two disadvantages uh, in psc over the rcc structure okay and next coming to the our curriculum okay so here the uh, uh, what are the contents you are going to learn in the pre stress and concrete structures as per your mr 17 syllabus book okay so here the prerequisites i request every student so please go through the concrete technology and uh, design of reinforced to concrete structures before studying this uh, pre stress the uh, uh, concrete structure subject got it so why because so you have to uh, know these three requisites before uh, uh, dealing with the plc subjects so because this concrete the concepts uh, high strength concrete what do you mean high strength concrete what grade comes under the high strength concrete okay how to improve the compression strength of the concrete this is all you can able to study from the concrete technology and coming to drcs why because you should know what are the Uh, um, I mean, what are the serviceability criteria and what are the strength criteria? Okay, how? What are the cracks? What do you mean reinforcement? What is the shear? What is the flexure? What is bending? What is deflection? This is all you should know. So that's why the prerequisites for this uh, pre-stressed concrete is uh, concrete technology and the DRCS. Okay, so please go through these two subjects uh, before uh, you know uh, coming to this uh, pre-stressed concrete classes, right? so let me start with the course objective why you have to study this and what you are going to learn in this pre stress and concrete subject see here uh, you are going to understand the different types and different systems and uh, what are the different losses of pre stressing okay apart from that how to design that flexural members for shear bond and torsion and design the end blocks so because as we know every beam in a structural element is supposed to be designed for flexure is supposed to be designed for shear is supposed to be designed for bonding in between two materials why because they are all composite materials isn't it and you have to design even for member for torsion okay so that's why here the main objective in the pre stress concrete is you are going to understand different types there in the pre stressing technology 
and what are the different systems available and what are the losses of pre-stressing everything you are going to learn here apart from that and using the concepts of linear transformation and cable profile cable profile that also you're going to learn in the psc subject and next one analysis of composite section and their applications in design of pre-stressed concrete bridges see not only a regular beams in your uh, buildings even you are going to study what is the design of pre-stressed concrete bridges takes place in the infrastructural projects okay and to understand the short term and long term deflections and their determinations so this is what the course objectives of the pre-stressed concrete subject in your thing isn't it yeah so let me uh, talk about individually what are the modules there so i think in every course you are having five modules right so here in the same way here i have listed five modules the first module is on introduction okay so the first module is on introduction here in the introduction you are going to learn the historic development how how the pre stressed concrete came into picture what is the history of the pre stressing from from which year the pre stressing technology uh, uh, there in the you know um, there into application okay everything we know from the historic development and general principles of pre stressing what is pre tensioning what is post tensioning everything we will know here in detail with some uh, with some uh, diagrammatic uh, representation and even in the meantime i will try, try to show you some videos also of how to differentiate this pre tensioning and post tensioning and the next one is advantages and limitations of pre stressed concrete and what are the materials to be used for doing pre tensioning and post tensioning and the high strength concrete and high tensile steel and their characteristics see there are very very few uh, sorry very important uh, introduction uh, there in the pre stressing so it's a completely theoretical uh, module uh, so where you can able to uh, question easily okay on some theoretical uh, you know concepts over here right so this is what about the module 1 coming to the module 2 see uh, the module 2 was categorized into two parts one is methods and systems of pre stressing and the other one is losses of pre stressing okay so here the module 2 the first part is methods see what are the different methods there for doing pre tensioning and post tensioning right so with that you are going to study very clearly so here there are four methods which was listed in your curriculum one is the hoyer system magnell system which is the fresnet system Gifford Udall system and Lee Mackall system. So these are the different types of methods and systems are going to be used to design the pre-tension and post-tension methods. Okay, that you are going to learn in the second module. And the second module there is another concept called loss of pre-stress. So here the loss of pre-stress in pre-tension and post-tension members are going to be study in brief with various causes. Okay, what are the various causes of creating this losses in pre-stress? one is due to elastic shortage of concrete the second one is due to shrinkage of concrete and third one is due to creep of concrete fourth one is relaxation of steel and fifth one is slip in anchorage bending of member and the sixth one is the frictionless loss okay frictional losses so these are the six different uh, you know causes which makes your pre stressing uh, having losses while doing pre stressing understand so this you are going to study in the second module right so coming to the third module so you have to go for the design isn't it so whenever you know the analysis when you know what are the methods going to be useful so then you have to design your member so the in third module you are going to design your pre stressed beam or any pre stressed element towards flexure right so here analysis of sections for flexure okay flexure means bending the other name of the flexure is bending so here beams pre stressed with the straight okay concentric eccentric bent and the parabolic tendons so these are the different uh, modes of uh, pre stressing anamata so here we will uh, go in deep and learn about the different types of beam pre stressing concept next one is stress diagram see in rcc also there is a stress diagram isn't it so your, your stress diagram will be something like you know uh, so when you see so i think we can draw it here yeah so it's okay uh, see uh, you know the stress diagram right what is the shear stress diagram what is the bending stress diagram of your beam in the same way even in the pre stressing concrete there is a stress diagrams so which is the elastic design of simple pre stressed concrete slabs and beams of rectangular i section like cone line cable profile and cable layout everything you are going to discuss it here in terms of flexure 
an exponential as same like a beam so how your beams are going to be designed your beams are going to be designed for shear under shear stresses flexure under bending stresses so here in the third module the second part is under shear which is a general considerations what are the principal tension and compressions how to uh, what are the improving shear resistance of concrete by under horizontal and vertical stressing and analysis of rectangular and i beams for shear <coughs> because i think you have done in your uh, uh, strength of materials also uh, how to uh, how to you know calculate the shear stresses of a rectangular section how to calculate the shear stress of an i section so in the same way here also you are going to analyze the rectangular and i beams for shear and what is the design of shear reinforcement as per code okay so here i will try to show you up what is the code required to design the pre stressed concrete structural elements towards shear towards bend right so i will let you know the code book here and coming to the fourth module which is a transfer of pre stress in pre tensioned members okay so here in the fourth module it is a uh, very important and where it is going to be completely concentrated on how the pre stressing is going to be transferred into the concrete by applying the tensile forces to the to the tendons right so here the transmission of pre stressing force by bond transmission length <coughs> flexural bond stresses and what are the codal provisions there and anchorage zone stresses in post tension members and what are the stress distribution in end blocks what is the anchorage zone reinforcement okay this is all you are going to learn in the fourth module okay so which is the transformation of pre stress in the pre tensioned members okay and the last one is the last module which is the fifth module uh, the a is a, a1 is the composite beams okay so in the composite beams you are going to study in deep what are the different types of the composite beams like propped and unpropped beams what is the stress distribution in the composite beams i think you all uh, learned this about the composite members in your strength of materials like members having a two different compositions isn't it in the same way here also we are going to study about the composite beams in terms of types in terms of stress distribution and what are the differential shrinkage takes place and what are the analysis of the composite beams and what is the general design considerations towards uh, composite beams okay so this is what you are going to learn in the fifth module in terms of a part and coming to the b so which is very important so when you design your rcs in members you design for flexure you design for shear so these two comes under the limit state of strength okay or limit state of collapse and what about uh, designing your member towards uh, limit state of serviceability corrosion vibration you know deflection okay uh, sway this are all comes under the serviceability criteria okay even in the pre stressed concrete you have to look at serviceability and strength okay flexure and shear comes under the strength criteria and deflection comes under the serviceability criteria so that is the reason why we have to look at the deflection under serviceability criteria so where we are going to study in the fifth module okay so what are the importance of control of the deflection how can you control the deflection and what are the factors influencing the deflection and what is the short term deflection and long term deflection what is uncracked members which is the prediction of long term deflections and what is the code recommending for the deflections these all you are going to learn in your fifth module in terms of serviceability criteria that's it so these are the very five important uh, topics which you are going to study in the pre stressed concrete structures here so i think i made a clear uh, view on uh, the topics which are going to deal in the pre stressed concrete structure okay and uh, let me show you the textbooks also ma so there are few textbooks which are mentioned as a uh, compulsory textbook and which are mentioned as a reference okay i request please guys so please try to purchase one textbook out of these four okay all these four textbooks are available in your library okay no need to bother but in my point of view so please try to purchase one textbook out of these four either pre stressed concrete by krishna raju or pre stressed concrete by n rajeshwaran or pre stressed concrete by ramamrutam okay pre stressed concrete by you know there is a foreign author called t y lin see and there are few uh, pre stressed concrete npcl courses which are uh, delivering by um, uh, devadas minan okay so there are a lot of uh, information available in youtube a lot of information available in google on on pre stressed concrete okay because that, that is a new era in our civil engineering okay so that is the reason there are lot of sources available so don't hesitate you can get the whole information from any mode of source right guys and next coming to the code 
okay as i told you code is very very important as uh, i discussed the design of civil structures for you towards uh, implementation and utilization of the code book uh, for while design isn't it in the same way here the precision concrete uh, also is having a special code for which is is 1343 2012 okay so please try to go through the code and i request all of you so please try to make a xerox of copy of this code book okay so till the online classes comments uh, no issue you can have a code in your hand so then it will be very easy to for your reference okay so please don't try to uh, look at this code only in the soft copy okay if you have a hard copy of this doing uh, solving problems will be very easy and identifying the important parameters and uh, some important uh, um, things okay it will be very easy while you have a hard copy of the code book okay so by, why because even though it is a covid time there is a lot of stationaries which was open so i request you guys so please make it as a xerox okay i think the uh, pages are around 65 to 70 pages there it's not like a dss which is having more than 200 pages okay it's very short like 65 pages are there okay let me show you how the code looks like okay yeah see this is the code right so here in the code uh 1340 2012 you can see clearly See, this is all. Guys, right, can you see this? Can you see the code book? 1343-2012, Indian Standard Pre-Tested Concrete Code of Practice, 1343-2012. Guys, can you see this? Anyone? So please respond. Can you see the code book or only you can see my screen? I mean, uh, yes, my sir. presentation screen. Sorry? Yes, sir. We can see, sir. No, no. Can you see my uh, code book screen? Guys, anyone? You can see the code book? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Code book yes. is cool, sir. Okay, so you can see the code book, right? Yeah. So uh, I will, what I do is I will try to share this code book, uh, you know, PDF file to the WhatsApp group. Okay. So please go out and take a Xerox copy of the code book, which is having around 68 pages. Okay. So that code book is, will be very useful for you guys when you go for, uh, you know, sites uh, who are where you are working under uh, pre-tensioning or post-tensioning, uh, you know, slabs, beams and all. Because nowadays even buildings are also constructing with the help of this uh, pre-tensioning technology. Okay. So the, in Hyderabad, there is a uh, company called Prika. Okay, Prika is a company where they are uh, uh, manufacturing all precasted elements. Okay, all precasted elements towards a pre-tensioning concept. Okay, so all pre-tensioning um, uh, elements they are preparing like slabs, beams, okay, staircases, okay, like columns and all. See, even if you see nowadays, uh, like flyovers. Nowadays, flyovers are also precasted elements which are uh, gone for uh, pre tension okay if you see our lnt metro if you see the uh, segment a long segment the segment is also individual segments are pre tension okay uh, then after it is post tension understand so that's why no no we are not everywhere this pre stressing concrete and pre stressing technology is okay there in there in the current uh, field okay so in that way it is very important Okay, guys, so I request all of you, so please try to uh, make a Xerox copy of this, right? Yeah. And uh, the next one is, what are the course outcomes? See, by the end of the course, uh, you students are going to learn a lot of things, and you can able to uh, relate that with the real applications, okay? So not only just learning this course and going through the course, you can able to understand the materials, which are used in the pre-stressed concrete and uh, you can gen you what are the general principles of pre-stressing of pre-tensioning and post-tensioning also you can able to uh, know it clearly and the next one is behavior of pre-tension and post-tension also you can able to understand and uh, you can design and you can analyze and design of the sections for flexure and shear 
uh, in uh, in beams of pre tension and post tensions of the pre stressed concrete and uh, the fourth one is how you can how the stresses are going to be transformed into the pre tension and post tension members and what the stress distribution takes place in various uh, members in terms of various methods also you can able to learn and finally in terms of serviceability criteria you can able to design your member under deflection okay so long term deflection short term deflection of the pre stressed concrete members okay so this is what you're going to learn by the end of the course okay these are the important course outcomes okay with uh, uh, for the pre stressed concrete structure subject right so that's it guys this is what uh, i thought to give information in the first day of the session and tomorrow we are going to start with the first module which is an introduction in that introduction we will try to focus mainly on the historical development okay how this pre stressing came into picture okay uh, on what uh, you know what made that scientist uh, towards developing the pre stressed concrete from the rcc structural elements this is all you are going to learn in the historical development okay so tomorrow also i will try to give the schedule uh, okay uh, in the morning uh, time so based on that schedule we can have the class in time based on the time table okay so this is how we will uh, continue the classes from tomorrow within the time table schedule right thank you so much guys so thank you for your patience and uh, any doubts you can ask me okay if the voice is not audible don't mind you can just text your question so by that i can respond to your question through through the message right so now uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask me the doubts if you have any there's any doubts i request you you can unmute yourself and you can no doubt sir no doubt sir <laughs> okay let me tell uh, let me tell you uh, this is one of the important subject so by that i want your feedback how you felt about pst uh, is it useful to you is it going to be yes, helpful to you in your career yes sir it is yes okay yes, so sir. what else so how you felt about this pre stressed concrete structures just just with this introduction how you felt this hello hello yes sir like uh, how you felt this subject like uh, do, do you find any difference between rcc and psc yes sir it is uh, uh, something different from rcc sir different yeah and, exactly uh, not something it's it's, it's completely uh, different so but um, but for uh, for learning this psc definitely you should have a strong fundamentals and basics from rcc and concrete technology okay so please don't lose that please go through your concrete technology and rcc subjects keenly before coming to this class okay by that it will be very easy for you to you know digest the uh, technical terms or you know some uh, designs which are going to deliver through you know uh, this online or you know offline sessions right what yes, else sir. anyone anyone can you can ask me doubts bharat watch industry and i don't know why uh, see the strength is very less so maybe maybe i was i scheduled the class in the afternoon so i thought the strength is less but from tomorrow i will be in time okay so because this is the first day i uh, i'm bit uh, busy with the, some other academical works so that's why i couldn't able to come in the morning session but from tomorrow i will be in time i will follow the time table okay don't worry guys okay and please try to uh, share this information to your friends and i will try to upload this presentation and this video in my youtube channel okay by that you can uh, have this video whenever you are free and please go through this presentation and please go through the images which i showed you the difference between rcc and psc by that you can able to understand easily okay so i will try to this i will i will share this presentation in a couple of minutes in your whatsapp group okay and i will upload this video in my youtube channel okay and i request all guys please uh, subscribe the youtube channel where i am keep on uploading lot of information uh, apart from this uh, subject uh, you know psc right so you can get lot of information from uh, my channel right
So what else? Uh, that's it. So can we end the session today, or do you want me to ask any doubts? So shall I wait yeah. for your end? End, sir. So can I end? Yeah. So no one, no yeah. doubts. So please don't hesitate to ask doubts. I I heard that uh, you know few students are you know uh, feeling shy to ask doubts through online. Uh, please, please don't feel shy. You, it's, you can express your doubts at any time. Okay, if you are feeling shy here, at least you can ping me through WhatsApp. Okay, uh, on my personal number. By that, I will clarify your doubts also there. Okay, if you are feeling shy, but please don't feel shy because your doubt will clarify. Uh, I mean, your doubt may may have with other students also. It's gonna clarify to all the students. So that is the reason why any doubt. So please don't feel shy to. You know, ask ask in the online session. Okay. okay then. Yeah, we will end this session today. Okay, and we will be in time tomorrow session. Okay, right. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, for, uh, give me the feedback. How this go uh, go to meeting? Is it good than Zoom app? It is much better than Zoom, sir. Much better than yeah, exactly. So because there is no time limit over here, and then at the same time. There is no uh, people limit also. We, uh, 260 participants can come at the same time. Okay, so till for one week we will try to manage through go go to meeting and uh, later on uh, our MRS website alone we are having a new application where we can take your online classes, uh, including attendance and everything. Okay, right. Okay then. Thank you so much. We'll meet you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Have a nice day and uh, be safe at your homes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.